Alright guys, Motorbob here and I'm here to tell you about BMW F800 GT. Probably don't want to get a bunch of horse poo on the uh, dealer's bike. It's only got seven miles on the clock, so I'm gonna give that a wide berth. On paper, this is actually kind of like a dream bike for me because most of the riding that I'm doing is commuting nearly every day into central London and out again. So a huge bike, like a GS or something like that, isn't as nimble, let's say. Also, I'm not the tallest, so a big adventure bike like that. A lot of people like GSs for commuting, I guess, but as I say, for me, it doesn't quite work. Also, we like to do weekend trips on the bike, and this is a good compromise, I suppose, between something not too big, but I believe it can eat the miles up on the motorway. You can get full luggage as an option. And then I suppose when I do get the occasional chance to do some more spirited riding, you know, it's not massive. You could probably have a bit of fun on the twisties with this bike. So if I was a very practical person, I would say that this bike has kind of got it all. So I tried the F800 GS recently. I really, really liked it. Surprisingly nimble, considering it's quite tall and it's a relatively big bike. It's not huge, but you know, certainly bigger than the R6 that I normally ride. So I definitely wanted to check this out. It's, oh, you're joking me. So compared to the GS, this is a little bit more practical. Get pretty much both feet down and I'm about 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, so it's an 800 parallel twin. And it's got plenty of grunt. I think it's like 80 or 90 horsepower, which for commuting is definitely enough. For motorway stuff, probably okay as well. If you're a serious adrenaline junkie, then maybe it's not for you. But for what it's designed for, I think that's probably plenty of power. Incidentally, I was just coming down Park Lane when I was going to the dealer, and I saw some of the police bikers on a version of this just kitted out, which looked pretty sweet, actually. And this is the 2017 version that I'm riding. So this only came out a couple of days ago, or the dealer only got the bike in a couple of days ago. So the main obvious kind of superficial aesthetic change is the color. There's a nice blue color that they've got in. I think there's also a white, and I'm on this black one with some fairly retro looking pinstripes and silver panels on it. And I think some of the GS bikes, the color schemes and the design is absolutely spot on. With this, I mean, it isn't the most exciting looking bike and I wasn't quite sure about this colour scheme, but actually when you see it in the flesh, it does look pretty good. Semi-retro, especially with the silver wheels. Yeah, it almost, with the single-sided swing arm and those swirly wheels on it, it looks a bit like a VFR, I think, or something like that. Certainly some echoes of a VFR. You know, super sports and that obviously look a lot more aggressive and sporty, but I don't think that's who they're aiming for, really. So I thought I'd bring it up to the A40. just to see what it feels like on a bigger road, you know, on a three lane road. I mean, 
but this is what it's made for really so i've done a little bit of filtering in town fine no problems it's not the most narrow bike but it's totally fine for filtering getting between the traffic it has quite a decent steering lock as well i noticed when i tried to cut between between two cars uh changing lanes back there a bit chilly here so i might give the heated grips a little push so you can put the heat grips on 100% 50% or off bit of open road there but this is the true test of a commuter bike in uh, London it's how uh, how you go through the lane split in here so yeah the other thing that the dealer said was new for 2017 was that it was updated to be fly by wire so that means that the throttle doesn't use a cable it's straight into a ECU and that gives you all the riding modes so you can set it to oh this road surface is horrible yeah you can set the riding modes to road or dynamic road is obviously a little bit more relaxed and a bit less direct and then dynamic is a sportier feel a little bit quicker you've also got three modes for the suspension which you can change while you're on the move and that's sport you've got comfort your softer setting probably for your longer miles normal and then sport which is the harder setting at the back and that means that you can uh, probably have a little bit more fun all right almost immediately those grips are getting far too hot down to 50 percent oh i've got to turn them off actually it's 12 degrees today so safe to say you don't need heated grips even with summer gloves on especially at this speed so you've got the fly by wire you've got the ride modes you've also got traction control which i have got off because it's dry and i'm not going to be pushing it particularly hard this was a shocking decision for a test ride wasn't it I thought I'd uh, do a bit of filtering and then maybe uh, a bit of a road riding and that would be you know a good test for a commuter tourer but this is just dull I'm gonna make a UE as soon as I can how does one go back on oneself here? Can I go left and then... It says no right turn, so can I go left and then come back onto this road and go back? Anyway, things I like so far. I mean, I kind of like the engine. It's not the most exciting foot for this sort of thing. Totally fine. Quite easy to ride. Plenty of grunt, as I've said. Riding position is quite nice, fairly upright, nice wide bars. It feels, looks kind of like a bigger bike than I thought. When you look at the pictures, it doesn't look like a huge bike, but once you're on it, you feel quite enclosed, you know? So I'd imagine that's quite nice on the motorway. Throttle's quite responsive, might be because I've got it in dynamic mode. Can I get past? Don't know what's happening there, but I've sorted it out. All right, back onto the A40 East. Yes. All right, we should get a bit of open riding here as well. I've got to say, although I've got bar end mirrors on my bike and I like them for filtering and going under the van mirrors and stuff like that, these big mirrors when you're on the motorway are absolutely awesome. Of course this is only like a test ride review, a first ride review, so can't really be comprehensive, but some of the stuff that I noticed that I like a little bit less is that, I guess you can adjust the screen or get a higher screen, but definitely just directs the wind pretty much onto your head and if you want to tuck in the seat is comfy like it's a little cup shape it's like a little cup seat that cups your bum but it actually prevents you slipping your, your backside far back enough in order to get low enough at the front so that you're covered by the fairing
so maybe I'd look at a higher screen if I was doing big miles and stuff. I'm not huge either, so if you're a big guy, just like keep you way over the front like that to get anywhere near being sort of beneath the uh, the wind there. It's comfy, mind. But yeah, I just kind of slip back and get down. Speaking of the seat, one of the reasons I tested it is because, as I said, we commute two up, we go touring, or like short towing, weekend touring two up, and actually it's got a really good substantial pillion seat, and the top box rack has got two handles as well, which look pretty decent. So yeah, it's very, very, very practical. If you like the regular sound of BMW bikes, then obviously this has it. Feels like it's a bit limited by the exhaust, as with most bikes in their stock exhaust, I suppose. And I'm used to the Delcovic, which is pretty loud on my bike. So this does sound pretty muffled. I'm sure it sounds good if you've got a decent pipe on it, though. Also, same thing with many standard bikes, but once you're used to using shorty levers then the ergonomics of sort of standard levers, the long ones, don't always feel great. But those are minor gripes really, aren't they? The pipe and the levers. I guess a lot of people would swap those anyway on most bikes. It's got a belt drive as well, so if you're going through winter, as I said, commuting, those sorts of things, then again, that might be something that is a nice thing to have. A lot of people talk about belt drive like it's a big selling point and I've never really thought it's like such a big deal but actually when you've um, maintained a chain for a bit it's really really hard to do that if you ride properly through winter with all the salt and stuff like you can spray you know ACF on the metal parts of the bike those sorts of things and they definitely help to stop the corrosion but with a chain it's really hard work so I kind of get it a bit more now I think can you get to Edgeware Road down here? hope so. The fairing warms up quite a bit from the engine. And it actually keeps your knees nice and warm. Alright, this should do the trick. <laughs> That's what a BM sounds like with an Acrapovic exhaust. <laughs> anyway. I did a bit of reading before I took this uh, test ride and I think the general consensus is that it's a decent bike, not much to complain about, but it might just not have the wow factor, but there's like a touring bike, seems like it would be pretty good with the tall screen, you can get the full luggage, I think it's quite expensive, but you could always look at aftermarket ones if you weren't willing to cough up, good practical back seat, enough power, comfy, heat grips, ABS, traction control, riding modes. So, if you're looking for something that is like much more lively and sporty, then you wouldn't be looking at this anyway. So I think if you're reviewing a bike like this and you say, yeah, good bike, but it's not that exciting or whatever, it's because your definition of excitement is different to the target audience of this bike, probably. One for one person, exciting might be 0 to 60 in two and a half seconds on a super sport. But if you're buying this bike, exciting might be throwing some luggage on the bike and setting off because it's got everything you need for a decent weekend trip and I think really if you wanted to throw it around a bit like you definitely could when I reviewed the 800 GS I said that it felt like the ECU was sort of doing all the work and it didn't feel very direct but I didn't get a chance to turn the traction control off when I was riding that bike it was about one or two degrees that day, so it was probably a wise decision, and I think it was slightly wet. Today it's dry, I've turned it off, and this definitely does feel a bit more lively. It takes a bit of getting used to, to be honest, but certainly around 6,000 revs, it feels like it comes alive. So whether that's down to the engine, or whether that's down to the ECU, I don't know, but it's fun though. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed a little ride on this bike.